Well, I hope I can answer them. Yes. And when you do, you look like a very intelligent young surgeon. I'm <laughs> proud to, that you chose me to come in and question me about doing this. Maybe you can straighten me out on a few things. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and at any rate, I'm really delighted that you came in to see me. Well, I am too. Yeah. yeah. So, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood? Like, how you grew up? Well, <laughs> I started back several years ago. It's uh, June the 11th, 19... And and 19, and uh, it was back in those days, it was, the country was a lot different than it is now, and that we didn't have there the, the toys and things we have now. Mm -hmm. Men have, men and women, ladies have advanced immensely during the years. I'm very proud to see the changes that have been made. And uh, I don't know, really. Uh, they. Uh, Where were you born, Dad? Huh? Where were you born? Where was I going? Where were you born at? Oh, I don't know if you have ever heard of the place, but I was born in a little place, pretty close to a little place called Newark, about oh, okay. out west here, uh, where we live now. In Indiana? Yeah. We've been there before. Oh, well, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's, well, it, there's not much there anymore. I went down through and it's, uh, I've got memories of it that uh, make you feel mighty good just to drive through there once in a while and see mm -hmm. it. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that you've... Uh, yeah, we almost bought a house there. A couple. Uh, of, we almost bought a house there a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well. So what, what kind of things did you play when you were a kid? What kind of games? Yeah. Well, mostly just hide and seek. Yeah. And, uh, handy over. Do you ever play handy over? I don't think so. Yeah, it was just over the schoolhouse. We just we just had a little handball, and. When we got old enough, big enough, that we could throw it over the schoolhouse. Then we'd throw it over, and whoever caught it, then we had to run around there looking for it, and they'd hit us with it. <laughs> it was a softball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'd hit us with it, and uh, if they hit us with it, well, then we was it. It was our time, then we were going to have to throw it over to the other group. <laughs> oh, sounds... I don't know, we had a good time at that. Back in those days, we Barred the old coal furnace in there. And it, uh, we had a lot of kitties, like uh, like you, young Mister and everything. It was fine, intelligent kids. So oh, they, they said, every good American kids. We're proud of them. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, we are. I don't mean we're the best in the world, but we're we're good. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. So, what was it like back then? Did you go to the grocery store? Or did you have any animals? Yes, my grandfather had uh, all kinds of animals, cattle and horses. And, and I don't know. You think maybe he had a few sheep around there, and I know he had a few pigs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him if he had rabbits for yeah, really I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, we grew up we grew up that way. It was uh, you know, I remember nineteen and twenty six. Nineteen and twenty six. And you can remember you could you kinda of make it in your mind, see it about what an old mobile automobile would look like. Mm -hmm. My uncle bought a brand new one and he took my uh, grandpa for a, a big ride out west into Missouri and well, yeah, that was a big deal back then. Uh huh. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, he drove over for years around. Oh, it was a six cylinder uh, old mobile. Oh, and it was a horse. I was really, <laughs> really proud of it. Most of us had Model T's. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah there's Model T's everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's one my dad had, my dad had, and the, the nights we take a ride in it, the, the dash looked like it was on the phone bar in underneath with them little coils of the fire you'd see them flying around for a moment. I was young enough to remember that. That was starting out about, what, 19 and 20, Oh, 25, 20, really, even, yeah, some place around there, riding around as a, but a Model D, you had a good Model D, you, you had it made. Uh-huh. A lot of, a lot of, I'd come, my uncle lived up here on Bloomington, on uh, South Rogers Street, he worked there in the Shower's factory there, as a, there used to be four plants. They were up and down uh, South Rudder Street, and it's uh, to me it was uh, the beginning of my life, and I didn't live there until stayed around there, in and out of there until I went off to the service. And She's fucking my camera. I'm sorry. And I, uh, I don't know. I got back in here about. Well, I'd have to talk to Mamo probably to tell you about what time we got back in here because I didn't know anything else after I met her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with me. <laughs> you were love struck, right? <laughs> <laughs> she was She's a beautiful good. young girl. Let me tell you, she was. She was she'd be a beautiful young girl. And we had some young girls that are good lovers too. And every day, that one of them is just. I'm over in. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dad, he wanted to know. Parker wants to know. Did you have grocery stores when you were a boy? If I worked in grocery stores. No. Did Did you go to the grocery store to buy stuff? Did yes. you go to the grocery, or did you just get mostly things off of the farm? Where did you get your food from? Oh, well. We got an awful lot of stuff off the farm. We didn't do uh, Yeah, we went to store for coffee and uh, things of, of that nature that we didn't have around here, you know. And we went to store for, oh, back then they used to have great big rolls of, of cloth that laid out here on the on the for the uh, women to look, the ladies to look at and decide what kind of cloth they want, what uh, with what pieces they wanted there to make dresses out of. About everybody made their own dresses back then. Uh huh. Oh, well, yeah. we this one she's learning how to sew right now, so she's made a couple of her dresses. So she she's has? she's gonna have to teach me though. So I she have has. a friend that taught her, and she really picked up on it. So she has. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, that's great. I want to tell you this. I'm an old man, but I've been here long enough to know that we're blessed with a lot of fine girls and women in this country that we have. I'm still living with them. I would get a little bit contrary about dying, maybe. I just <laughs> stick around. I've got my wife in here someplace. She's, She's right over there. Yeah. She's over there. She's a wonderful girl. I married her about 85 years ago. Can you imagine that? <laughs> wow. Can I'm you, 74. Can you tell me how you met your wife? About 85 years ago, yeah. Can you tell me how you met your wife? How I met her? Uh-huh. Well, she, I think, um, kind of in a way, she came around my folks uh, over around Newark. Back then, Newark was pretty well loaded with people, and she showed up, and by golly, I thought, I was coming home from the, from the service. I'd been away for quite some time, having uh, been in Europe. But I, uh, she wasn't bad looking, and I thought, by golly, she was friendly. She gave me a little smile, and, <laughs> well. and then I followed up on her, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been a dandy. We've got the other girl here, that Robin, that's, uh, that's one of her girls. 
we've had a fine family. Yep. How many brothers and sisters did you have? Oh my, we had, we had, uh, we had an awful lot of deaths in our family when we were growing up. How many brothers and sisters yeah. did you have? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I He's don't, counting. I don't really. So, Dad. Yeah. Can you name your sisters' names? Sisters. Yep. There was Mary. Yeah. Mary Ruth. Yeah, there was Mary Ruth. Mm -hmm. and Gladys. Mm -hmm. And there was. Uh, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Juanita. Juanita. Yeah. Yeah. And Aunt Jessie. Yeah. So five sisters. Yeah. And and then I had a lot of brothers, but they all died. They, I don't know, most of them before they got up any age, seemed like. That was way back in the 1920s, back in those do you, years. Do you remember what they, they died of? Do you remember the disease? Yeah, mostly. Uh, from pneumonia. They, and didn't they yeah. have diphtheria? Was that the other disease? They had what? Did they have diphtheria? They had diphtheria, mm -hmm. yeah. Pneumonia, diphtheria, and they didn't have, they didn't have medical system, doctors and things like they have nowadays. It was, they, they had a rough time of it, but I don't know. Life is life. Got pretty rough at the time. But I don't want to hold that up too much to talk to you about because everybody didn't have that type of luck. That type of luck. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, about everybody had tough luck on it. Yeah. 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 I think I think seven of them died. Yeah. I think you had like seven, but yeah. Yeah, they were just. Yeah, they were just uh, young fellows. Oh, it hurt me because I was one who wanted to be able to keep a brother, so I said. But, uh, but I made it up there pretty strong. Went off to a 3C camp and get a, finally wound up with the Navy, the Navy and in the Army. And so uh, then I met Marge and here I am. She kind of pulled me off the road. <laughs> I worked at Crane for years down there. Uh -huh. Yeah. We had a good life. I'm, uh, I'm like close to 100 years old. <laughs> yeah, you're 100 today. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I've enjoyed it. Today you live in a mighty fine country. Fine people, it's a fine people. Automobiles running hither and yon and everything. <laughs> oh yeah, so you get to, you're educated and you know how to conduct yourself. I'm really proud to have been an American. And I'm really proud to be one of you. To have been one of you. And to have had a family that is among you. So you see, you owe me something. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be moving on along before many moons, and uh, my but my youngsters, my my children and their children are here moving in with you, and I'm proud of them. Boy, they're these are really intel intelligent kiddies. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. I wouldn't say they're the smartest in the world and everything, but they know how to conduct themselves. My golly, they, they, are, they are smart and I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's about all I can say to you. <laughs> but I don't see very well, I just, I just see you and your, your group I've been. <laughs> but I'm well, glad you came by. Well, we're happy to, to meet you. Yeah. Because we have our freedom because of what you did. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted in you. God bless you. So, how did the Great Depression affect your family? 
The what? The Great Depression. How did that affect your family? It, it really, it really wasn't bad. It was, uh, oh, it was bad, but it, no, no. We, we worked through it. We were used to working back then. We didn't have a lot of tools and things to make us uh, happy like we are these days. <laughs> we had a bottle of tea Ford at our place, I know. <laughs> and the night, if we take it out of the night, it'd sing to us and go coiled in underneath the hood. I can remember them. They did, they did, it was always just different light, lights running from one to the other because of this. That's what controlled the engine in me. I really thought I was somebody, because everybody didn't have one of them, but Dad had one, and I thought he was one of the smartest men in the country. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my uncle lived here in South Roger Street. He worked there in the shower plant over there on, on Roger Street. It was a good life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember, was your dad in World War One? But Dad in the old world, no. Do you remember any stories from anybody that was? In World War I? Uh-huh. Yes, I had uh, some of them told some pretty wild stories. And I, then I, uh, I come along to where I got my little taste of it. <laughs> and uh, coming down the pike, I was, uh, I was in, uh, well, I was in Africa, in Sicily. And, in Italy, and then I was in France and Belgium, and Germany. Yeah, during World War Two. And then so, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, a shame that we had to get out there, I guess, and conduct ourselves like that. But I'm not running. Uh, I'm not running things and. Uh, I know, I'm glad I don't have to shiny shape things up and balance things out like uh, sometimes become necessary. Uh, but yeah. can you tell any of those stories from World War One? Do you remember any from uh, Wild Stories? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I was in an armored outfit. I had a 105. I fired there. I fired there. Oh, I, I pulled a, I pulled a rig along behind me to everything with full of ammunition, and down in Africa and all the way through the other places I was in. And, yeah, we had some battles, we, we had some losses, and we had some uh, wins. Uh, well, the winner was not really enemy to anybody, nobody. Yeah, might have, we might have killed a few people of other ranks and everything, but, uh, we're not, uh, we carry no, no bad feeling toward anybody over there. But, uh, I think the, I think the world suffered from so many people who did not, uh, uh, just, each one at that particular time, I guess we thought maybe we ought to have a little bit more than our share. <laughs> I suppose that's why we had armies and differences, I reckon. But, uh, what do you say would be your most memorable day? Is what? What would you say would be your most memorable day out of the war? My best. Watch. What? What is, out of all the days of the war, yeah. is there a day that stands out to you? Well... I've been hit. 
I've been hit, I suppose. Uh, Can you maybe tell him a little bit about D-Day? Well, where you were and I what you were doing? I was at Normandy, D-Day, in June the 6th, 1955, 45, 1950. 45, you're yeah, right. Yeah, 45, yeah. And at the time, we, we had the feeling we were there to clear people who were being depressed and, and forced to do things that uh, they didn't, didn't want to live, waited to live. I don't really know how much of that, as I later years have changed my ideas a lot of sometimes, but uh, how they, how did you? What beach were you on? Huh? What beach were you on? Well, <laughs> on uh, um, was it Omaha? Omaha, yeah, yeah. I was in England preparing for it, um, and uh, that's where we hit it on June the 6th, 1945, as well. Uh, Did you come in on land or on in the sea? Well, both. We what did you come in? How did you come in? I came in. I came in off the sea from, from England. Yeah, we we had prepared. We come across there. And yeah. What kind of boat were you in? Well, I was on different ones. The best I remember, I was once I was underneath. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, but uh, was that a what kind of boat was that? Well, I don't. You know. Was it a U-boat? No, it was a it was a light landing boat, and for you to tell me or for me L C T. Come off of an L C T. Okay. Uh, it was an L C T. I for me to tell you, I got hit, see, and everything. For me to tell you exactly how to, a whole lot about it, it's about impossible for me to do it. I can't. Uh, so were you on a LCT, and how did you get into the water? What happened? How did I? <laughs> That's a part of it too. I come over to the side of the ship to make the landing on the beach, and the next thing I knew, this I was sitting there looking at the the each enemy guns, pointed at me and everything, and. I was uh, trying to get out of his sight. I got hit on the, he docked my tank. I had a, uh, I had a, uh, what did I have? I had an M7, and I, I was trying to get my gun in position, and I did. So I fired a few rounds at him, and boy, I mean, that made a, that made him unhappy. He opened up on me. Uh, but we had the whole two, we had about a couple of days there getting in on on that particular landing. It uh, it took a while to get it, to get the job done. Uh, yeah. So when he hit you and you went in the water, how did you get saved? Well, I'd say about the best way that I got saved is another boat just slid right in there just like I had been, like they'd been watching me and he just come right alongside of me and boy, I, just, I went in the hell, jumped inside of him and then he took me out to a destroyer that was there two days before we got out of that particular section there. But, uh, uh, two days and nights. Uh, so we had to try to get the uh, Germans out of there altogether. And we finally got it done, but uh, it took a while and 
it costs a little. Yeah. So was was D Day? Do you have more memories from D Day or from Battle of the Bulge? Well, can you tell Parker a little bit about Battle of the Bulge? The Battle of the Bulge, I got hit, but I got hit, I got hit bad. It, uh, but all I know was I get hit twice there, and I lost one. I lost one tank and everything, and and it didn't uh, didn't take him any time to me to take pick up another one where the, it needed someone to pick it up, and I I took it up and. I lasted a short time in it too, because they hit me in there. I don't know, I, I remember a person that fell out of it, a couple of out of my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there was two guys that was just uh, soldiers there on the, in the area. They grabbed me and threw me on a jeep. And that jeep didn't ask any questions or anything. It just headed for the a forest, and we went into there, and they had a kind of a pickup station there. To, and from there, they took me to uh, well, finally before I would stop anywhere. They finally committed to Paris, France. But I don't know what the heck what was doing here. Yeah. I, I'm going to ask two more questions for Parker, and then you can go forward, yeah. Parker. Yeah. Tell Parker what the weather was like on, uh, on at Battle of the Bulge. What was it like? The Battle of the what? At the Battle of the Bulge, what was the weather like? The rubble? The weather. The weather. Oh, the weather like? What was the weather like at Battle of the Bulge? Well, it... Do you remember? It... It wasn't. It wasn't comfortable. It, well, uh, was it warm or cold, or what was it? It was getting cold, and Hitler sent his army down into our area, which was the southern part of uh, Germany and France, and all of them were joined down in there, and that's where we met. Um, down that area, so was I was it? there then until, oh, when did I come out of there? Come out, I come out of the gas at about March, about March before I got back out of there, I guess. Was there snow on the ground? Oh, well, we had, yeah, it was miserable weather. It was, it was, but we had to hold what we had, what we'd taken and everything. Couldn't uh, couldn't turn around and ignore it then. How did you stay warm? Oh, what made you think I got warm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. Tell Parker uh, how you tried to stay warm. I don't know. I dug holes in the ground for one thing when I could. And uh, it would sort of look like we were this place where we were going to be there for a while. And I'd, uh, me and a buddy of mine would be digging up in the, under the ground and get in there where, there was, where it was warmer. That's about, about all I can tell you. Were you dry? Huh? Were you dry? Dry, yeah, most of the. Mostly I was, yeah, but then I had to, I got sick, I had to, uh, they took me out to the hospital for a while, and also I, I needed to, to get some clothing and some, some new clothing, because uh, the plate of some of the clothing they had issued me was a little bit itchy. <laughs> I wanted to get off of it, get it off of it. Uh, and then, it, then, what was the weather like on at Normandy, 
on the beach at Normandy? What was the weather that day? What was going on? You mean, you mean when we hit the beach? Yes. Was it sunny? Yeah. Or was it raining? Yeah, it was well, bad. And, uh, was it raining or sunny? Well, no, it was in June. See, so, I didn't get clear of Normandy. It probably looks like about all six or eight, six or eight weeks before I really got clear of Normandy because the German army was <laughs> they was contrary about leaving there. So that that whole uh, section, the war kind of ran in there for for some time. And so actually that whole area in there and through France and down to where the Dipo when I finally come home, it's a uh, Pretty tough country. The the enemy had uh, a lot of troops, and everything in there, and they were they were doggone good fighters. So we knew we had company. <laughs> they knew they knew that we were there. They were, had to take us all there. But, uh, but we finally made it. Finally made it. Come on. Can we go back a little bit? So how did you join the Navy? When I joined the Navy, I was in a 3C camp over at Worthington. And uh, I got to talk to some uh, fellow that went off and he, he left the camp that I was in, down a 3C camp. <clears throat> he left there and then he came back up there on a visit. And and he was talking to me about even being in the army. I went to up to Indianapolis. Indianapolis wanted me to go to the Navy, and so I had to go home. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't go to the Navy right then because I wasn't old enough. But mm -hmm. I waited. I waited until. Uh, Oh, I expect there was right close to a year or before. How old were you when you joined? I was sick as trying to think. Age. How old were just, you when you went? Just uh, age, just uh, 18. 18, yeah, 18, that's where you 18. And then, they signed me up at Dinanapolis. I I forgot the number of the street of it. I can <laughs> I remember that as well. I never forget it, but it uh, I I got into a wreck down there and a few things I don't remember right. <laughs> so do you remember the name of the ship you were on in the Navy? Yes. What did I say? Yes. That bucket needs to be emptied. I'll have to talk to Mom about that, probably. To find it. Mom, what was the ship was on? Tell Dad what ship he was on. Huh? The Texas. Was it the Texas? Texas. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the funny thing you think, but why would you forget that? I can't tell you why. I don't know. My mind is like that. I, yeah, uh, I hit the, uh, I was on the Texas, and I became a gunner's mate, and I was on her for, well, what, two or three years? Two or three years, she was a dandy ship. Oh, yeah, she was a beautiful ship, too, a big, and we had, I think something like 1,800 men on it. That's part of crew. But she had, she had a lot of good replacements and a lot of good things. Good place to live, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was good. But I had nothing. Yeah, and then when I come home, 
a year later, it had a couple of bad bars and everything. I, uh, I don't know, Boyd had the feeling for the Texas to go down and look at it once in a while. She was, she was down, down in, uh, Somewhere down in Texas. I'm almost afraid to say Texas because... That's where it was. Huh? That's where it was. Yeah. Can you, can you tell Parker some of the jobs you had on the boat? I was a gunner's mate. Yes, what other jobs did you have? Oh, my tell him goodness. about cleaning and. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell him about that? Tell him about. Uh, oh, yeah. We did, it was a home on that thing. But what I tell you, it was a dandy place. Did you have to clean the ship? No, huh? Did you have to clean the that's, ship? That's what we did, clean the ship. <laughs> did I have to clean it? Yes. That's what we got done. We, did, we got cleaning done, or else, by golly, we. Or else we were up cleaning. Yeah. We either got we either got it done or we were up cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> she was a dandy home. Oh, it was a me a dandy home. I was. Did you tell him about cleaning? Do you remember being up high and cleaning? Oh yeah. The mast or the. Yeah. Tell him we, about that. Oh, I didn't like that very well. <laughs> I tell you what, I went up into the crow's nest. Right up, that was the highest spot on her, but I had to go over the side of it then and get myself onto a bucket and swing me, put me in underneath then to clean the underneath the overhang up there, which was a machine's gun to us. And uh, it, my golly, when I, I thought, you going to do this? Yes, they put me out there, and I said to the motion mate, you gonna do this? He said, you're darn right. He said, what you're up here on the morning watch. He said, just as soon as we have breakfast, you're coming over on the side of this, underneath. And that's where I went, <laughs> underneath the top part of it. Didn't it? And I had to work all the way down that old tripod bass, three great big legs of her coming down on the side of it down to the navigation bridge, and then when I got down there, I got smart and I mouthed off of the guy a little bit, and he didn't like that, and neither did the exec. So he, he took me off with a good little job that I had right at the moment, and I had to wind up with another one that wasn't quite so good. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't, they didn't put me in jail. They, they, had, a, they had a place that they could have. But on the boat? On the boat, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they had one, but I didn't. And did you, what about cooking? Who did the cooking? Did you help any with the... Oh, we had cooks. We had, oh yeah, you had, you had cooks. These were, these were the rank, the rates, or uh, that's what they did. That was their occupation, you might say. And boy, were they good cooks, too. So you had good food to eat? Huh? So you had good food to eat? I was a mess cook. I had it three months at a time. But we paid, I had 60 men. And I said, I had, I and one other guy had. I believe it was just one other guy, maybe two, but we had three men, three men to take care of those 60 men because we had tables from overhead after each meal. After we got the table clean and everything, we put it up. The next meal coming down, the table came down and the meal went over. We carried the meal down from the galley then, where the cooks had prepared it, and 60 men went around there. But those 60 men paid paid us every every two weeks. The Navy, that's the nice part about the Navy. The Navy paid twice a month. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it was nice. I had, a, I had a good home on that board, let me tell you, I did. Did you ever get sick at sea? 
Sick? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I got the measles. Well, oh, oh I was thinking about seasick, but that was. Did you ever get seasick? Good point. Did, Did you ever, ever get, get seasick? seasick? Did you ever get seasick from the boat? Not much. Not much from Texas, so she rode like a nice big whole mill, yeah, did it? No. Oh, she rolled a little bit and everything, but it was slow and everything. And we went to France. We went to France the second year I was on her. And boy, they didn't think we were something, and, and if, if we didn't think we were something, <laughs> we thought we were something too. We had a, we had a nice. Uh, we went into the harbor, and we was tied up in there for a while, and they, they showed us all over. Uh, they showed us all over. They did. They had. They ran there at no cost to us. We could ride on over to Paris. Look things over and everything. That was mostly because we had done for them in World War One, you know. Yeah. So we were very happy to do that, and very. They were proud of us. We were proud of them. Which, and then I was back over there then later, during the war, and they were they weren't involved in the war that time. This time, it's, but. Uh, <coughs> But we were at the. Uh, well, how, how, how did you go from the Navy to the Army? How did I spring from the Navy to the Army? Or how, how did you go from one to the other? Well, I just did it myself. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and Mom's help. Mom didn't want me to go back to the Navy. Oh, she had a regular. She was real concerned about that. So I said, well, okay then, I'll, I'll go back and try the Army. So I tried five years of the Army. And let me tell you something, that Army is no sneeze. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you this, this American Army is a good one. I tell you that because I, I learned, I, I felt it. It's a darn good, Darn good army. Which did you enjoy better, the army or the navy? Do you? Which did you like better, the army or the navy? Well, I liked the navy for the ease of things, and it worked out better for me because when I come home, then Crane was down there, and I worked out. I worked 28 years down there, and then they worked at Crane, and it's, oh yeah. It was, it was great, but it was uh, it's coming to what I really liked. I liked either one of them. I, they're good. They're good. I call them good soldiers and sailors, whoever they were. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I was proud to have been an American soldier or sailor. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. We've got to find, find American people. <laughs> we laugh and everything, but American soldier was a he's something to be proud of. I'll just tell you what. If, if there was a lesson that you would want this generation to know, what would that be? If, what? if there was a lesson that you wanted this generation to know, what would that be? Can you hear? I'm him? having trouble. Okay. It, so if you were to speak to their generation, yeah. what lesson would you like to leave with them? What would you like to leave with this generation? What would you tell them? We're proud of these United States. Be proud of these United States and and be a good American, and by golly, you you will not regret it. That's a guarantee you won't. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mighty fine country, yes. mighty fine people. You bet. And we're proud, but at the same time, we're not arrogant or we're not mean. We're not uh, we're not looking for a fight or to prove any particular thing. But 
when the pressure gets in, in the areas where it's needed, the rest of the world looks to us. The rest of the world looks to us, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm proud to, I'm very proud to have been an American. My God, yes, yes. So when the when World War Two is over, were you were you already married at that time? No. No. So when you got home, then how soon after the war was over did you get married? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we're Marge. She's over, she's she's over, over here. here. Yeah. What? You, I did pretty soon. Pretty where soon. were you when the war ended? Where, where was that? When the war finally ended, where were you? Ukraine. Well, well we they were Ukraine. still fighting in the Pacific, and I was planning on that I was going to have to go there. And uh, as it turned out, as it turned out that uh, things changed. And we didn't have to. And so I guess it was about a year and a half. About a year and a half or two years or so, Marge. Marge maybe would know more about that than I do than that. You, you came home to Camp Atterbury when? Yes. I when came. was that, do you know? Yeah, I came in. I came in to Camp, camp Atterbury from overseas in the, what I call the ETO European Theater of Operations. Mm -hmm. And I could come in there and uh, I was in and out of there, also down to Africa. I was in the war in Africa and in Sicily and in, in, in uh, then after uh, Europe, after we hit the beach and then from there, in fact I was inside, I was inside Germany. Uh, a little distance the, the night before. Before I was moving out of there and, and it was hit, was uh, lost by my uh, division commander. And I don't know, of course it's been several years ago, but we had quite a battle in there because the enemy almost, almost took us over there. <laughs> but uh, who was your leader? Who was your general? Pardon? Who was your general? Who was your general? Yeah. Well, <laughs> was it Patton? Was uh, it Patton? Patton, part of the time, yeah, yeah, Patton, part of the time, but. Who was your leader? Who was your general? Pardon? Who was your general? Who was your general? Yeah. Well. <laughs> was it Patton? Was uh, it Patton? Patton, part of the time, yeah. Yeah, Patton, part of the time, but... Uh, so were you in Germany, yeah. the last place that you were overseas, where were you? The last place that I was? Yes. Yeah, Before you came home. Oh. Well, I was in England, er, in France. You were well, in France, and the war home. was over. I was on my way back. They sent me. I was over in Germany, but after they decided that I was the one that was going to get to come home, they uh, went into France. And then I had to wait for a ship to come, you know, to bring me back for me to ride on when I come back in the U.S. of A. And that's the way it happened then. I come, come to there and then they, when I got there, they sent me back down to Atterbury. And, and where, I, where did you come into, when you come to the U.S., where did you land? Where did your New ship land? Into New York. New York City. Do you, do you remember visiting your family for the first time? Seeing your mom and dad? Well, 
Yes, I sort of, sort of remember. Uh, Dad was working at Crane, and Mom, I don't know, Mom was at home yet, I guess. She had her. Did they know you were coming home? Not know. No, they did not know it. Uh -uh. No, they didn't operate that way. I just, you just showed up? I just showed up. Yeah. So, in, in Africa, were you in a tank or were you in a jeep or something? What, what did you use to get around in Africa? Yeah, in Africa was a... Uh, M, it was in the M7. Uh, we had a tank. Is an M7 priest. Yeah. Was the name of the tank, and you rode in tanks in yeah. Africa. Is that how you got around? Yeah. Uh, I think the kids would like to hear about you coming up against a camel and a little boy. Yeah. Can you tell them that story? Can I never get the camel? Yeah, can you tell them about the camel and the little boy in yeah. Africa? Yeah, not very well anymore. My mind is... Do you remember there was a little boy and the camel had a hold of him? Yeah, he did. What was the camel doing to him? The camel, the camel had a hold of him and the camel put him to the ground and then the camel kneeled and held him to the ground with his with his uh, teeth, with his his clothing that he wore, uh -huh. he held it right to the ground. To it with it. What did was, you do? He was trying to. He was trying to. The camel was trying to crush him. He got mad at him. Oh wow! And well, we just we ran out there. Me and two or three others ran out there to the camel. We were close by though. We went out there with that guy and started walking at him with about anything we had and everything. You know that camel to his head flew around there to the side and everything, but he'd come back and grab that kid again. <laughs> and But he funny, he jumped up. We Somebody smacked him a good one and he jumped up by a gun and he was going to fight us. And the little boy then, he got up with his mom and they were what did I call them? They were Japanese. They were, they, they were from Africa. They're from Africa. My mind is not. <laughs> That's okay. That was in Morocco. Were you in Morocco at that time? Well, let's see. Uh, you come into Casablanca, correct? Yeah. And so that would have been Morocco. Uh, yeah, at that particular time, I would have been in Morocco, yeah. In Africa. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. and tell them about what kind of pants they would wear there. What kind of what? The pants. Remember, they like to take, what was it of yours that they liked to trade with you guys for cigarettes so that they had pants? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh I don't know. They just, they just... Was it... Parachute or? I, I don't know. Or your bags. It was your bag, wasn't it? The bag that you put bag, your clothes bag, in? Bag of clothing, yeah. They would make them, split them and make them into pants. They'd cut the holes in the bottom of them, make them into <laughs> pants, pull them up around their waist, and then pull the drawstrings tight about them and everything. And yeah. what did they give you in return? Well, what we usually traded for was what I of course now we don't smoke cigarettes that's very bad for you but back then they didn't know that and so I, they traded I think they traded lucky strike cigarettes didn't they no well, they they wanted lucky strikes yeah they they wanted them. They wouldn't trade them. Oh, they wouldn't trade them? There was oh, something no, they no, traded. No, they, oh, no, they'd fight you. They'd fight you. No, they wouldn't. Uh, yeah, but we don't want to smoke American, now, yucky. American tobacco and, and they, you know, um, I thought maybe chocolate or something. Huh? Somebody, one of the countries liked chocolate. You wanted to get their chocolate. 
Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. I tell you, to be honest with you, it's been so long ago, and I've, I've. Uh, That's okay. I just don't remember things like I used to. That's okay. You're doing a great job. Yeah. So, what was the weather like in Africa? The weather? Uh huh. When you were over there. Well, it was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was really nice in that particular section. I mean, we went in Casablanca, and we were stayed there. The, we come out of there, and uh, I expect we was in there about about two or three years. Or, uh, Do you remember any battles in Africa? Uh, no, not compared to. Uh, Battles that we'd had otherwise, they, uh, I don't remember if they had. Uh, was it Raman? Huh? What was the. Rommel? Yeah, Rommel. Yeah, Raman, that's a new yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Rommel. 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 Yeah, I saw Rommel. Desert Fox. Yeah. I've seen them all, but. Uh, Did you see I, him? Huh? Did you actually see him? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. We was out there we was out there with our guns and equipment and everything. Did you see we Mussolini? Were... Huh? Did you see Mussolini? Mussolini? No, I don't, I don't remember seeing Mussolini, but uh, But you saw Rommel. Uh, after we went to Italy I did see yeah. Who was that saw them? Rommel and Mussolini and Yeah, I don't remember. Did you ever see Roosevelt? Oh Roosevelt was over there. I thought he was gonna move in over there. He came over there in Africa. Yeah, he spent a lot of time in Africa. Yeah. So, were you in Italy? Did you fight in towns? In Italy? Uh huh. What was it like over there? Do you remember Sicily? Yeah. Is that where you fought in Sicily? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, in Sicily, but it, usually by my artillery, it was uh, it was I fired a lot with. My artillery, I was, I was subject to a lot of firing, and I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Fired to support the infantry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you ever meet um, Eisenhower or any of the generals like that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen them all. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've seen them all. Mm -hmm. I just never came there to, especially the last, uh, oh, the last three, uh, the last landing of the land we had. I'd say it's been so long ago, I can't, I can't remember. Uh, this was at Normandy. Where, where I saw so much Eisenhower, and uh, yeah. yeah. So, we what did you do at Crane? Good Crane. After you got out of the, after you came back to America. At Crane. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, I was in the Texas. Technical division that George Overton, George Wisdom, uh, Oden, and uh, I had uh, I had uh, all the drawings. In fact, I set them up. Set them up there for the whole system on all the equipment we had and everything, and I helped them. 
helping people get their stuff back where it belongs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back in that. Yes. So what year was it when you got out of Crane? Out of Crane? Mm-hmm. Dad. Huh? You worked in Crane for 28 years. 28 years, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. I built, I made catalogs, and I sent catalogs around about everybody. In fact, I was all the way in Washington. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had, I had a good job, and I, I uh, the program that I set up in there was a good one. It was a, uh, it uh, whenever we got done, we uh, we closed shop, we closed the book, but we opened the book up, and there it really shows what we've got and where it is, and it's manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had it. Yeah. Can you tell me about the time where you tried to sneak a dog on your ship? The one. Can you tell me about the time where you tried to sneak a dog on your ship? How many times? Say a little louder, Parker. The time when you tried to take a dog onto your ship. The time when I started to take a... A dog? Take a dog? Uh -huh. can, on your ship? Can, can you tell them about the time you snuck a dog on your ship? Do you uh, remember sneaking a dog on your ship? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I... Do you remember you guys wanted a dog? Yeah. And you snuck him on the ship. How did you get him on there? <laughs> I don't really remember. Do you remember his name? No. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. You... But you did that, didn't you? Did you help do it? Uh Sure. Yeah. 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 But I, no, I know there's a few things that I, I just don't remember. I've been bumped on the head, I guess. <laughs> Sorry about that. Parker, he's getting kind of tired. Well, we saw some pictures at your party, and it, we saw one of you playing the harmonica. Do you like to play the harmonica? Do what? Do you play the harmonica? No, no. I can blow around on it. But that don't really. Yeah. I wouldn't say it. I play it. Do you, Do you like to listen to music? Yes, I do. Yeah, you want to hear a song? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You want to sing? I'm not going to sing, but my boy can play the piano. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, good. This is This is a song I think you'll recognize. Yeah. You remember the Andrews sisters? Remember what? The Andrews sisters. Oh. The Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy? The, the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy? Oh, I remember the song. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I can play that song on the piano. Can you? Mm hmm. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I heard it. I'd be glad to hear it. Yeah. Entertain me, will you? Yeah, you can rest. You've yeah. answered a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where did you go, Mark? She had to go to the restroom. So she'll be back in a minute. We'll wait for her so she yes. can hear it too, yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay, yeah. I thought she put a hear so much that How many children do you have? Do you have any children? Uh huh. Well, I've got two girls. I guess two girls. Ten, what? Two boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see lots of pictures around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you been? Have you been on the honor flight? Did you ever get to go on that honor flight over to Washington D.C.? Honor, please. The, it's an honor flight. 
the airplane did you, did you get to go on that any mm -hmm. to to see some of the memorials in Washington oh I used to play with an airplane yeah, yeah I I flew some I have license oh yeah say, yeah I flew. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I've been around so long and I've played with a, a lot of people, a lot of fine, a lot of fine people. Do you want to sit here or do you want to sit back in your chair? Torpy, that used to sit, be down at the chair. airport. He, of course, him and, him and his wife both are gone now. But, uh, it's about at the close of the book now, oh, but I, yes, I've, uh, we've, Marge and I, and I, I know she'd say the same thing, we've had a, we've had a wonderful time in there. Yeah? Uh, yes, we have, we're right here. And, uh, we lived in Florida part of the time, and, and we had a motor home out here that, I saw that out there, yeah. Yeah, kept it in shape and everything. We, we played all over there. Well, kids, why don't we entertain him a little bit? Let him rest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want to pull your chair up there, Parker? So I don't normally play a keyboard, so I might mess up a little bit, but okay. that's okay. Yeah. The turned up. Pedals on. This isn't our keyboard, so. <laughs> Can you hear it? Was it loud enough? Yes. Okay. Word for me. I said yes, I do a robot to group. <laughs>
song, Dad? What was the name of that? Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you, remember, wanna, you remember that? Huh? You said do you did. remember that song? I do know. The Andrew Sisters, right? The what? That was the Andrew Sisters. Oh, yeah, they were good ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to try? Yeah. Do you want to try your other one? I have a, I have another one. This, he can but, uh, play. He used to be able to play over there. You know the song over there. Yeah. Who sings that one? Oh, or I mean, play Jim Okay. Yeah. But but sometimes he hasn't practiced this one in a while. So maybe that'll bring some memories back. That's a wedding song. Yeah. Yeah? We need to find a piano teacher around here. Just yeah. move in here. If you guys yeah, know any, anyone, we want to get day. back into some lessons. Yeah, when you push the pedal, it takes the pedal off. But when you let off of it, it pushes the pedal off. It sure does. A lot of those are professors and stuff. That you'll be hooked right in. Here's my chest. It is backwards. Yeah. Play now. <laughs> yeah, I don't play if you put it in that one. Or you just can't use the I don't know if I'll be able to use the
Was that was that the cello at the at the party? We enjoyed hearing that. Was that your brother, or that, yeah, no. that was my brother. Oh, your brother, Joe. Okay, that was Dad's. <coughs> She's talking about Joe playing the cello. Yeah. At your party. Yeah. That's my brother. There's four of us kids. Okay. Joe here? No. No, no they just no. remember him playing. Oh yeah. So that the first one was Parker, and then. The last one played was Mia, and this is David. I'm not sure. If he, I'm he's not practiced in a long time, so he said, "We'll see." That's okay. <laughs> we want to hear him.
mine. You just have to bring it. I don't think they're recorded. That's okay. I'm sure you can. Yeah, I'm sending you okay. the whole thing. Do you want to mm -hmm. end, but do you want to try your... I'll play a song in the harmonica. Parker, so my grandfather was in World War II, and he, um, after he passed away, they gave Parker his harmonica. So he's kind of played around a little bit with the harmonica. Yeah. So I think he's going to try a song. Yeah. They they just play by listening in their ear, so mm -hmm. that's what uh, Dad plays by. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, he loves the hunger. He can um. Yeah. I'll just show you. Try to play Amazing Grace too on it, okay? Amazing Grace, yeah, okay, yeah. But I can play a song. <laughs> do the um, do yeah. the one that you did with well, the Well, Amazing Grace is going to sound good anyway. Yeah. 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 No, the one where you did them both. Um, yeah. Um, I have I'll do it with you then. Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. Dad, um, do you want to try? You want if I just a minute? I don't want to play. Just a minute. Yeah. Would Would you play one for him back? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I you can know. try. They're not expecting anything. Just, you know, just a little.
<laughs> I forgot I had a harp like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'll put that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of these talented young people? And what? What do you think of these talented young people? Well, I defend it. I'm really glad that it's nice to see them again. Yeah. yeah. They came here for your 100th birthday on June 11, 2019. Well, happy birthday! <laughs> Maybe they birthday. would sing happy birthday to you. Yeah, thank you very okay. much. Yeah. Parker learned the harmonica. Yeah, happy yeah. birthday yeah. to Parker. me. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Dad. Happy birthday to me. Thank you for letting us come over. Thank you for letting us come over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, you for all of you that come over. That's right. That's right. I appreciate your. Well, I heard you like the morel mushrooms. I wish we would have. We would have. We we got some this spring. We we fried them up. Those mushrooms. Huh? Do, do you hmm. like morels mushrooms? Huh? You like mushrooms, Dad? Do you remember Rusty James bringing you mushrooms? Oh, yeah. You know, this is part of his family. This is his uh, brother's boy. Oh, really? And and their children, well, yes. I, well, what was your dad's name? I gave you what? Is they uh, give? So, uh, these are James's. Oh, yes, yeah. James's. Yeah. So, my husband, his mom and dad are Russell and Catherine James? Yeah. Oh, I, I know Russell. I know the James boys and the James okay. boys I remember mostly and haven't seen them. Don't see them as much anymore, but they, oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful people. Yeah. 